What's going on YouTube? So as the auto industry begins to shift away from traditional powertrain options, brands are beginning to introduce alternative variants of their popular models, like this all-new Sorento plug-in hybrid. This is the most efficient Sorento money can buy. So with that being said, let's go ahead and check it out and see if this is the Sorento you should buy. So with the plug-in hybrid model, Kia is basically only offering this in the top two trim levels. So that's gonna be SX and SX Prestige. And in addition to that, you cannot get the X-Line package. So all of them are gonna come with this really sleek looking design that you see up here. Now, taking a look at this design, you're really not gonna notice any visual distinguishing factors here in the front from the gas-powered model. For 2022, of course, like all the Sorentos, you have the updated Kia emblem but you still have that signature tiger nose grill as well as the sleek lower fascia like I was mentioning earlier. Additionally, since this is a fully loaded model, you're going to have the full LED projector headlights as well as the LED daytime running light and turn signal indicator and the LED fog lamps down at the bottom. Now, as we come over here to the side, this is where you will notice some visual differences and that's because we have a special 19 inch alloy wheel for this plug-in hybrid model. Uh, as you can see, it has a really nice contrast design that I think looks fantastic in person. As we come above, you got your nice chrome accent there. And then, of course, as a top-end model, the mirrors are going to have all the nice features, including heating, blind spot monitoring, and power folding. Now here at the side of the Sorento, we're going to come in at 189 inches in length. And I do want to mention just a few things. This model is the SX Prestige, and on the regular gas front drive model, you would have blacked out window surrounds as well as this piece down here. So if you like the chrome look, this plug-in hybrid is the way to go. Now, coming around to the rear design of the Sorento, nothing has really changed for the plug-in hybrid model. As you can see, we're gonna have that signature Sorento design, which has that tough masculine look that I love. We have that new Kia emblem right here in the middle for 2022. Then if we come to our taillights, these are gonna be full LED if you go for at least the SX trim level, um, the brake light as well as the turn signals LED. Then if we drop down below that, our reverse light is gonna be integrated down here and you're not gonna have any exposed exhaust outlets on any of the models and Kia has not provided a tow rating for the plug-in hybrid. Now for the plug-in hybrid Kia Sorento, that's gonna put you at one of the top end trim levels. So every single one of your safety systems will be standard equipment. So that's your forward emergency braking, auto high beams, lane keeping assist, as well as adaptive cruise control with highway drive assist. Well guys, I can't wait to get this Kia Sorento out on the road to test out that plug-in hybrid powertrain. But before we do that, let's check out the interior. And before you do that, please hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already and follow us on our other social medias like TikTok and Instagram. As you would expect, we do have a standard smart entry system with the typical Kia key fob design and remote start. And as we walk up to the vehicle, you'll notice the mirrors will fold out. To get inside, press the button to unlock. And then check out this interior. So there's definitely more changes to the interior than there are on the exterior for the plug-in hybrid model. And some of those changes are from the interior material and color differences. So the SX trim level is going to come with a leatherette seat in your choice of black or gray. But you'll notice that's not what we have on this model. That's because on the SX Prestige, we have the real leather seating. And this is an exclusive color combination for this model. Uh, a navy blue and white. So absolutely beautiful and really feels a lot more fancy and premium than the standard color options. And then as we turn over here to your door trim, those same materials reflect up here. So we have the kind of off-white leather that goes all through here, uh, as well as this center area. The top plastic here is going to also be the navy blue. 
and then you've got a faux aluminum trim. You also notice on the SX Prestige model, we have the brand new two-person memory seating for the Sorrento lineup, and all four of the windows are one-touch automatic. Another new thing to the Sorrento lineup is the 14-way power adjusting seat on the SX Prestige, so we now have four-way lumbar as well as a power thigh extension. And then, like I was mentioning, we do have real leather seating on this model. Uh, I love the blue. Like I said, really cool looking. I like the stitching details as well. And this is a super comfortable seat to set in. Now looking around the cabin, the materials are by and large the same as the gas powered SX Prestige. So across the upper dash, we have the soft touch plastic with the stitching detail, again dyed in this blue color. We have the faux aluminum trim through here. It is gonna be padded along this part here. We have piano black and silver accents that run through all of these center areas. And along here is not gonna be padded, but everything does fit together extremely well and feel very solid. Now start out this model, put your foot on the brake, and press the button. And you notice right from the start we do have a special uh, little chime to remind you that you're in the plug-in hybrid model. Now as we take a look at our gauge cluster, uh, you'll notice that we have the 12.3 inch full digital setup. That's on the SX Prestige version of the plug-in hybrid. And the graphics are a little bit different here. We have uh, kind of a different font for the speedometer. And then over here, in place of the tachometer, you've got your kind of just uh, basically charge, eco, and power gauge. And then, of course, you can scroll down between all types of different information, including some things with like energy flow and stuff like that. Um, and then, furthermore, you can signal to the right or to the left and you're gonna get that live camera feed on this SX Prestige model with the blind spot camera system. Now as we pull back here to the steering wheel, this is one of my favorite elements of the cabin. I absolutely love the way this looks. This is a two-tone steering wheel. As you can see, we've got the navy leather on the outside edge and then kind of the whitish leather on the inside. Nice piano black accents, really looks super premium. Reminds me a lot of what you get on like a high-end product such as like a Volvo XC90. And then as far as the wheel itself, it is going to be a manual tilt and telescoping. Heating comes on the SX Prestige model. Let's go ahead and turn over here to the side and check out interior storage. Not much has changed in this area from the gas model, so you'll continue to have a really nice size center console here. You have a bin, which you can kind of toss off to the side there, and inside you have plenty of space, nice felt lining at the bottom. And just like with the gas-powered model, you can stick the stack of coupons in there, and they're going to fit no problem whatsoever. Now up in front of that, we've got a little hole right there, two cup holders, and then you can press on this piano black lid. That's going to give you quite a bit more storage hidden inside of this with a wireless phone charging pad as well as three additional USB ports. Now pulling back here, you'll notice there is a pretty substantial change from the gas-powered model, and that's that we have the electronic rotary-style shifter. Uh, that comes on both the hybrid and the plug-in hybrid models. Operation is very simple. You're just going to twist over to D for drive, twist in the opposite direction for reverse. And when you head into reverse, you're going to notice this 360-degree camera system on the SX Prestige model. As you can see, really nice and clear graphics. You can switch between couple different views over there on the side and then your parking sensors appear over here in the gauge cluster. Then for park just press the P right on the top and then behind that you've got your selection of your different drive modes and you also have your electronic parking brake as well as your brake hold function. Now as we come up this handlebar here just like with the Telluride you do have your heated and ventilated seat controls on this. Uh, heated seats will be standard on the plug-in hybrid models and then ventilated seats will come on the prestige version. And then up above that, we have our typical Sorrento climate controls, dual zone automatic. You can adjust your temperatures with these easy to use toggles. You have three automatic modes. And then these buttons here are touch sensitive. Um, I do notice that you have a driver's only climate setting um, that you can go into to help save energy. 
And then coming up here to our volume knob next, uh, we've got two different sound systems, a six speaker sound system, and then when you go to the SX Prestige, that gives you the 12 speaker Bose premium sound system. That's what we have, so we'll give it a sample right now. Yeah, so just like I said in past rental reviews, this sound system sounds really great. Um, you know, fills up the cabin well, plenty of bass, and uh, basically just, like I said, it sounds really good. Okay, so here is our display. Um, of course, this is the 10.25 inch display. Um, since you have only fully loaded trim levels, basically with the plug-in hybrid model, all of them will have this display. Um, with that, it's gonna come a few different features. Um, of course, being the plug-in hybrid, you're going to have some special gauges or and measurements and stuff that come in this menu right here. You do have your passenger talk system as well as your quiet mode. We have built-in navigation with this display. And then you also have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay abilities. They are the wired variety because with the larger display, just like in other Kia products, that's going to give you the wired version. Now as we move on up here, we do have a frameless auto dimming mirror. Uh, there are not any Homelink Universal remotes built into this, however. And then up here at the top, I'm a little surprised to see that we actually do not have a moonroof on this specific example. Uh, with the plug-in hybrid models, it's offered as an option, I guess, for people who want to perhaps save a little bit of weight. So even if you get the fully loaded model, it's still optional, and this specific example does not have one. Well guys, hop on back here and join me in the Sorrento's rear seat. Now if you watched our other Sorrento review, you'll know that this is a very nice place to spend time. Kia has done a really excellent job of making this very luxurious and spacious for you and your family. We have 40 inches of legroom, 39 inches of headroom, which does actually make the Sorrento plug-in model a little bit smaller than the regular uh, gasoline Sorrento model. Um, but overall, it's still very spacious, so you don't have to worry about that. We have I'd say probably seven inches or so of legroom behind my knees and the seat back adjusted to Drew's seating position. My feet can easily slide up underneath of the seat as well. Now, let's turn our attention towards the feature set. You're probably noticing that there are quite a few features in this rear area. So all of the models are gonna have standard climate controls. That's good for a day like today when you forget to dress appropriately for the weather. And then if you drop down below that, you have a 12 volt outlet, a charging USB port, but that's not all. You have two more charging USB ports and the seat backs. And then the seats themselves, you are noticing that they're captain's chairs. That's actually gonna be standard on all plug-in hybrid models, um, regardless of whichever one you get. And then as far as the seat themselves, they are also going to be heated if you go for the SX Prestige model. Now, one of the Sorrento's nicest features is that you do have a standard third row, which is something that you really don't see in this segment at all. So let's go ahead and check out that nice feature. So in order to get back here, Kia has made it really easy. You push this button on top of the seat back that folds it forward and slides it right out of the way. And let's talk about the space. This is actually a really pretty nice third row. You wouldn't expect it to be this nice for such a small vehicle in this segment, but we're gonna have 29 inches of leg room, 37 inches of headroom, so certainly no issues in the headroom. The leg room is perfectly fine. I have about an inch or so of space, and this seat is slid all the way back, so keep that in mind, and my feet can slide up underneath the seat. Um, so if you're looking for a reference point, this is about as big as a Toyota Highlander, which is the segment above. Now, as far as the features, we have USB ports here on the side. We have a cup holder as well as a little storage area. However, you will be missing out on vents. Now, coming up to your tailgate for the Sorrento, as you can see, we do have the hands-free smart open feature. And that's actually going to be standard on any plug-in model, so that's nice to see. Now, let's talk about the space. Behind the third row seats, we're going to have 12.6 cubic feet of space. That's actually enough to fit all of our camera gear as well as the charging cable, so that's not too bad overall. If you fold the seats down, they expand to 45 cubic feet, and then as a maximum, you have 75 cubic feet. 
But this is an area that I really want to spend a couple minutes talking about is that this plug-in hybrid as well as the regular hybrid model does not sacrifice any space over the regular gasoline model, which is quite remarkable um, to have. So nothing to consider there between the regular Sorento and the hybrid models. Now let's talk about how they finished it. We have a carpeting along the floor. If we lift that flooring up, there's not gonna really be any additional space up under there as you would expect. And the third row is going to be manual folding. Um, there is no power folding third row option. Your passenger seat is power adjusting on this fully loaded model. We do even have the lumbar support as well. And then popping open the glove box. Uh, it's full of all the owner's manuals and stuff, but this is a, a good size glove box. You're definitely not going to have any issues putting the coupons in there. And for those of you that get the plug-in hybrid, I'm sure you want to save money on gas, also save money on food. And I do want to point out, it's also really nicely felt lined. That's a nice luxury touch that you typically don't see on a mainstream vehicle. Up top, we have a large mirror. We have some lighting, and then we can detach the sun visor and extend it. Starting off this drive, we're just kind of putting along in EV mode, but of course. Pretty fast. Put your foot down yeah. and things are going to escalate a lot very quickly. So what we're looking at for this model with the plug-in hybrid is basically the foundation of the hybrid trim level uh, just with larger battery pack in essence, right? Yeah. So you have the 1.6 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine. Um, You've got, of course, your electric motor, your uh, battery pack, and total system output is going to be 261 horsepower. Yeah. It's a 13.8 uh, kilowatt hour battery pack. You're going to have 258 pound-feet of torque. So as compared to the regular hybrid Sorento, that's going to be quite a bit more power. Um, the hybrid's going to be at 227. So you're going to have quite a bit of power boost for this plug-in model. Um, and, you know, that, that acceleration there, I think that felt actually quite quick, you know, for an SUV. Um, you have that battery component to boost you off at the beginning, and then, then the engine will kick in to kind of keep you up to speed. Right, when you're in the hybrid mode. So, uh, today, um, we have uh, kind of a limited range, so we're down towards the very bottom of the uh, battery pack, unfortunately. Um, so, what that's going to do is make this operate mostly like a, the hybrid model when you're at that low end but of course the benefit of having the plug-in hybrid is charging that battery pack all the way up and getting your 32 miles of full electric range so when you're in that mode you're just going to be able to drive around like a full electric car if your commute is under 32 miles um, which really frankly I would say most Americans probably drive less than 32 miles a day um, if you do that you can operate this vehicle as a pure EV, which is a really cool benefit. That's the reason why you would choose the plug-in hybrid over the regular hybrid model. Yeah, and really the benefit with a plug-in hybrid model is that, like Drew said, you could maybe commute every day of the week to work on full electric power, and maybe on the weekend you take a little weekend trip up to, you know, a couple hour drive. You don't have to worry about the charge network or anything because you can just go back into the gas power. So um, plug-in hybrids are actually very neat in that regard as opposed to just a regular hybrid where, you know, you just get good fuel economy. That's pretty quick. <laughs> Dang, yeah. yeah. Uh, really, definitely, you can tell the power advantage. This is the most powerful version of the Sorento you can get, and yeah, you can tell that uh, really kicks off the line really well with that battery power. Um, like I mentioned, just to reiterate, if you were in the full EV mode, it would stay in that, um, but we're working in conjunction with the motor and the EV, so you really get both of them at the same time, and that really makes you feel 
uh, super powerful. Yeah. Now you probably also noticed on the acceleration that we have a six-speed dual-clutch transmission. So this is not actually a CVT, which is um, pretty interesting. That's one of the really nice things about Hyundai Kia hybrid systems are that they don't have a CVT, so you're not going to have that drone when you accelerate. It's actually a traditional hybrid or just a traditional transmission. Alright, and one of the really nice things about the Sorento is how comfortable and quiet it is inside of its cabin. And, you know, heck, we might even be in full EV power uh, going at highway speed. So let's get a sound level reading and see what we're sitting at. Fifty one point seven. <laughs> yeah. If we're going fifty five, um, that's really quite impressive to have that type of sound level reading. That's pretty much full luxury level uh, quietness inside of this cabin. And I have to admit, um, sitting in here, it really does feel like a luxury level ride quality as well. The Sorento has always been pretty impressive to me, and I think that this just kind of makes it even better. Uh, it's a really luxurious atmosphere. I love these navy seats, and, and it, the ride quality is just excellent. All right, and let's go ahead and talk about our air ball and slam dunk today. I th really think the slam dunk is quite obvious. This is a really excellent hybrid powertrain as well as the plug-in component of it. Unfortunately, you know, like Drew said at the beginning of this drive, uh, this is not a fully charged Sorento, so the plug-in component we're not going to be able to talk too much about. Hopefully, Kia will send us maybe one of these and we can charge it up uh, extensively at our house and we can do, you know, some range testing or whatever with this plug-in componentry but you know even as just a regular hybrid with this battery fully discharged it's still a really excellent powertrain that you will certainly appreciate and love as you own this vehicle now the air ball i think that's also pretty obvious i think it's quite ridiculous that we don't have a standard panoramic sunroof on an sx prestige plug-in hybrid especially considering this vehicle's price tag um, so we can go ahead and talk about that so the plug-in hybrid, like we said in the beginning of the video, is only available in SX and SX Prestige trim, so it's the higher-end model. So that's going to have a starting price of $44,990. Uh, this SX Prestige, as equipped, is coming in at $49,275 once we add in the destination charge. But do keep in mind that this is eligible for the $7,500 federal tax credit. So that is something to consider when you're looking at getting one of these, is that the Sorento you know, 49,000 minus 7,500, depending on your tax situation, you could be looking at lower 40. So um, that definitely makes the moonroof thing a little bit more <laughs> acceptable. Right, and you can get the moonroof if you want it as an option. And if you want a lower priced trim level, um, you know, you can still get the hybrids because uh, those come in the lower trims and then the plug-in hybrid is basically the higher trims. But another thing to consider when you're talking about that is going to be your fuel economy. You know, that is of course gonna save you money across the lifetime of owning the vehicle. So we're gonna be looking at 79 MPGE for this plug-in hybrid model. The regular hybrid without plug-in is gonna be rated at 37 miles a gallon combined. But anyways, in conclusion, um, you know, the Sorento, the regular models, we've always found to be very impressive and the addition of the plug-in hybrid and hybrid models really is just a benefit to this arrangement. Like I said, I really like that you have all the different options that you can choose from. And for a lot of people, having a plug-in hybrid option may be the best of both worlds, like Mason had mentioned earlier, with uh, the ability to perhaps handle your entire commute on e full EV experience at the same time go on long trips as well. So if that sounds like something that you would be interested in, then this Sorento plug-in hybrid really is a fantastic option. Well guys, thanks for bearing with me to the end of this review of the 2022 Kia Sorento plug-in hybrid and it's fully loaded SX Prestige trim. If you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, any of the above, please hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, it's completely free. All it's going to do is give you little notifications on our most recent content. And if you like cars at all, I promise you will love subscribing to our channel. So please do that. 
Also follow us on our other social medias like TikTok and Instagram. They have shorter form content that might also interest you. Anyway, we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.